So, welcome. And I believe that there is a blessing for you in this service. So, like I said, these are your extravagant change. And I'm going to be sharing with you the word of this month. Apart from the word of the year or the theme of the year, I'm also going to be sharing with you the word of this month. So, in the Global Communion Service, this, if this is your first time joining, we always share a word of the month. That is the month of joy, the month of this, the month of that, a month of prayer, whatever. This, that is what we do basically over here. I share a short teaching on it and um, we close up over there, basically. So, um, I want to, first of all, begin by saying Happy New Year. Welcome to 2023. You have officially made it into your year of extravagant grace and change in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So welcome, and we are so excited to be having you. Now, yesterday night, actually this uh, morning for Chalak night, uh, you see, it was meant to be for yesterday, but we could not let it go past us, so we did it uh, yesterday night. Sorry, this morning at 2, uh, at 2 o'clock all the way to uh, 5 a.m. or so. So, um, yesterday I read to you on the book of Genesis chapter 2. Let's go all the way down to verse okay let's go to chapter 3 chapter 3 because that's where everything happens amen so genesis chapter 3 and the verse number one i hope you are ready okay so um, yesterday I told you that there is in life there is something called a change now a change can be either good or bad but what I told you this morning or you can take it as yesterday what I told you yesterday is that there is going to be nothing but good change happening in your life from now to the end of 2023 where we can all meet again for chalak nights and say well done good and faithful servant last year a lot of changes were made in our lives in fact in 2020 a lot of changes were made in our lives and i showed you a scripture that altered everything with the relationship that we have with god I don't know if you ever took notice of it, but it is there. I want to show you a verse very um, meaningful. Let's go to Genesis chapter 3 and the verse number 8, New Living Translation. It says, when the cool evening breezes were blowing, the man and his wife heard the Lord God walking about in their garden. So they hid from the Lord God among the trees. Now, why did they do that? Look at what happened in the... Look at what happened in the book. Uh, actually, in the first part, which is Genesis chapter 3 and the verse number 1. Now, this is an introduction to a change. So this month is going to be an introduction to a change in your life. Something that you've been waiting for your whole life or for some years now. This month is going to be your introduction to it. Amen. Let's open to the book of Genesis chapter 3 and the verse number 1. It says, the serpent was the shrewdest of all the wild animals in the Lord, that the Lord God had made. 
And one day he asked the woman, Did God really say you must not eat the fruit from any of the trees in the garden? That was the exact question that he asked. Now notice that there is a change about to take place with their relationship with God. But because of the human carnal wisdom that we had, they had, they did not know that they were about to ruin their relationship with God. They thought it was just one of those things. They thought it was one of those things that people say but never happened. But they then forgot again that they were dealing with the creator that was never created. Amen. Are you around somebody? So, a change is about to take place here. Let's go to Genesis chapter 2. And let me show you how the existence of what it actually was. Let's open to... Um, okay, so you see, the creation of the world, he created the Garden of Eden first. And so now he created man after creating and making the Garden of Eden beautiful for man. After he did that, look at this in the verse of Genesis chapter 2 and the verse number 15. It says, the Lord God placed the man in the garden of, the, of Eden to tend and watch over it. And as he did that, the Lord God spoke to him directly as a human being would speak to a friend and said, but the Lord God warned him, you may freely eat of the fruits of every tree in the garden but except the tree of knowledge of good and evil and if you eat its fruits you are sure to die if you eat its fruits you are sure to die hallelujah sorry about that but we are going to continue from where we left off so let's go back to genesis chapter 2 and the verse number 16 so after the Lord had placed them in the Garden of Eden, that very beautiful place, this is what the Lord told him. Because the Lord had created trees, trees that bear fruits, fruits to eat. Are you listening? So this is what the Lord had done. Let's look at Genesis chapter 20, verse number 16. It says, But the Lord God warned him, You may freely eat, the fruit of every tree in the garden so the lord had given him the wisdom of each and everything that was around him he gave him the he gave him the wisdom of the tree the wisdom of the plants and the animals that were surrounding him he gave him the wisdom of all that and he now said all these trees that you are seeing around that bears apples bananas yam whatever have you you can eat of it except this tree that is in the middle so notice that there was a tree in the middle he made a tree in the middle of all the other trees that bear fruits now notice that this tree also bears fruits but this tree bears fruits of good and evil This tree bears fruits of good and evil. And the Lord warned him that, look, all these trees that you are seeing around, you can eat of it. But this tree that is in the middle, except the tree of good and evil, because if you eat its fruits, you are sure to die. That is it. Immediately you disobey the Lord and you eat the fruits that he said you should not eat. You are sure to die. And this is what most people have done. This is the mistake that most people made in 2022. And it was not a fruitful year for them. So as people were harvesting, People were still suffering. 
Amen. Are you there? So after he warned him, Adam had now agreed and said, Okay, okay, sir. This I will not touch because you have told me not to touch. And I know what it does. I know what death is. So I will not touch for me to die. I will not do that. No, it's out of my league. So it was made as such to be there. Not to be changed, but to be there. It's to be stable. Now, then came along Eve. And after Eve came along, the serpent came into the story. Now, what does the, um, the verse of Genesis chapter 3 and the verse number 1 say? It says, The serpent was the shrewdest of all the wild animals the Lord God had made. And one day he asked the woman, Yesterday I explained to you why most men think that women are the feeble, uh, women are feeble, or they are not strong people. I told you yesterday, because of that, I have not, we've not made an attempt to hide the video. After the global communion service, go back and watch that video. Go back and watch that video. Watch the whole preaching. Because it has something for you there. Amen. So it says, The serpent was the shrewdest of all the wild animals the Lord God had made. And one day he asked the woman, Did God really say you must eat of the fruits? Did God really say you must not eat of the fruits from any of the trees in the garden? Now look at this. You see, Women are easily deceived. But in today's um, world, it's not like that. Women before were easily deceived. They actually did not have a right to speak. Back in the days, the early days that they were writing the Bible, that, that the process of writing the Bible was still ongoing. A woman had no right to do anything. The only person who changed that was the mother of Mary. Hey, the mother of Jesus Christ, which was Mary. Yes, she was the only person who changed that. Had it not been for her, no woman would have been able to speak today. So all these lady pastors that you are seeing around, it is by the grace of God and by the sacrifice of Mary. That was by the sacrifice of Mary that we all as Christians, men and women can speak freely without anyone doing shaggy to us. Amen. So, the reason why the serpent was able to deceive Eve into eating the fruit was this. You see, when God was creating Eve, what did he use? He used one rib of Adam. So, Adam have two ribs but because the Lord said it is not good for a man to be alone amen hallelujah because he said it is not good for a man to be alone he then said to himself okay then meaning the person that I'll create for you must share parts of you. So he now took his rib and gave it to Eve. When he formed the structure of Eve, he gave it unto Eve. He put it there. 
So did it mean that Eve had one rib? Yes. But look at how they were still able to survive. Is God not amazing? What can God not do? Look at that. Both of them were surviving on one rib. Each. Now, a man was created first. Do you get it? Listen. A man was created first with two ribs. Now, should one rib leave the man, the strength may be pleased. But the man's strength in wisdom will be able to sustain him. With women, they are much weaker. That's why most men say they are the weaker vessel. And let me tell you why. The, the, people use the reason of them having one rib and their mind being weak. Amen. So, since they had one rib and they were made as a helper for the man, they are claimed to be the weaker vessel. But God never said they were the weaker vessel. In this context, God never said anything like that. They are not the weaker vessel. Women are sometimes actually much, much more powerful than men. People don't understand it. But listen, it is the truth. The truth is the truth. You can't do away with it. The truth is the truth and it shall set you free. Amen. The truth is the truth and it shall set you free. So, this was what had happened. This was God creating Adam, creating Eve out of Adam, and they were both sharing one ring. So, let's look away from that now and come to why the serpent was able to deceive Eve. Because she is weaker in wisdom. Although God has given her wisdom, God has given man more wisdom because he was the first to come and the first to save and to name each and every animal that exists to this day. From dinosaurs to lions, from lions to calves to dogs, to hens to cocks and many others. And that is why the man was given more wisdom. As he was doing it, he was opening his wisdom. But you see, Eve just came along the way after everything had been done and been set bright and beautiful. Amen. So, obviously, she wouldn't understand much. Although God has given her wisdom, it's not as much as Adam has because he has experience. She just came. Do you see? Yes. Oh, yes. So, let's move on. This was why she was able to be deceived. Because she had no understanding of what she was doing. She lacked understanding of what she was doing. She didn't know that it would get her to this extent. All these points. So, look at something. How to identify a change. An incoming change. Number one. Question Notice the question in this verse of Genesis chapter 3 and the verse number 1. It says, Did God really say you must not eat the fruit from any of the trees in the garden? You must note that. And now, let me tell you something. The serpent was not really evil. The serpent was just like any other animal. Like how peaceful the lion was. How peaceful the cheetah, the elephant was. But Satan came onto the earth. Just as the Lord can come onto the earth, Satan had come onto the earth. Because the Lord had blessed Satan in such a way that no other angel had received such a blessing before. And had been created to that extent before. Oh no. So he stepped onto the earth. And he sent forth his spirit, his evil spirit of sorrow and hate. 
and also destroying into the serpent. And so people think that is that it, well, it was the cause of the serpent, but if, you see, it was not really the serpent's fault. Should a spirit possess someone now? Can you blame the person for acting anyhow? Should the spirit of evil possess you now? Can you blame the person? What possibly can you blame them for? For destroying your home? If they've broken something, what can you blame them for? They were possessed. They had no control of their body. And this was how the serpent had no control over his or her body. So a lot control. Because the serpent itself is a very lean creature. It's just one straight line. It's just one straight line. So, if a spirit should possess it, it doesn't even have the opportunity to do anything. Although back then it had hands, legs, feet to move, it did not have control over anything. Because it in itself is small. And one thing about the spirit of Satan is that when it possesses you, it possesses you in such a way that you lose control and do without thinking. And that is how people end up sinning every day. But they don't realize that they've sinned. Amen. So the spirit of Satan possessed the serpent. And that was that is exactly what made the serpent ask that question. Satan is always aiming at asking you questions that will question your changes or your decisions that you've made. Now, according to the spirit, you can be able to tell if somebody is asking you a question in a good way or not, by the Spirit, you can do that. By the Spirit, you can do that. For example, if you see this person over here, and you say, and you are talking to the person, and you are making a decision. And, okay, let me use an example that we all understand. Maybe God has spoken to you through prayer. Alright? You are meant to start this business at this time and on this day or this service or this event at this time or in this day is the understanding here you are starting this business at this time on this day at this hour so then one person from somewhere comes as your friend maybe your friend or your mother or your father or whosoever and they come to you and they say, did God really say? Immediately you hear that phrase, did God really say? First of all, who are you to question what God has said? If God spoke to you and you have even given your trust unto someone to tell them what God has spoken unto you and you have the audacity, the foolishness, to come and ask me, did God really say? What is the meaning of the question you are asking me? This is how we should be living as Christians. But we don't understand it. So, immediately we hear that, those, that phrase, discard the Don't even think of answering in any way. Because one answer will lead you to confusion. That's how the devil is. When he asks you a question, immediately you fall into that trap. It will, it will surround you with confusion. And then you'll be pacing around. Should I do this? Should I not do it? Should I do this? Should I not do that? Oh! Father Lord, help us. We need your help. Your help is needed in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I hope something is going down. Okay. So, as I told you, the serpent was possessed. So it wasn't his fault. He just lost control of his body to the devil. Although he was created by God. I mean, we are all created by God. But at the moment in time, we all get possessed by the devil. So he cannot use that as a yastic. Or an excuse. Amen. 
let's move on. Time is fast spent. This is 5 I have to make it somewhere by 6. So, uh, it says, The serpent, what? Was the shrewdest of all the wild animals in the Lord God had made. And one day he asked the woman, Did God really say you must not eat the fruit from any of the trees in the garden? God has said it already. So first of all, you don't need confirmation from anyone. If God has spoken to you that do this at this time and at this date, and you still foolishly go and talk to someone, and they still ask you, and you answer them, then meaning that you don't trust the word of the Lord, and you are not trusting what God has to say about you. That is basically what it means. You don't trust the Lord. So you don't trust what he says. Why should you go and ask someone if I should do it? Or why should you even listen to the question of did God really say? If he has said it to you, that is it. Period. No more continuation. It's like a case being solved, resolved. Once the judgment is made, bam, that's it. The docket has closed. That is how God's word is. When he says something, it's final. So you don't need to go and ask anyone for confirmation. When I started ministry, I did not need confirmation from anyone. I did not need confirmation from a school. A Bible school to tell me anything. That I am called. We are all called. We are all chosen. <laughs> Father Lord, help us. So, like I'm telling you, this year, don't listen to anything of, did God really say? Today, from now on, from today, Sunday, January 1st, 2023, walk according to what God says. That is what the Holy Spirit just told me now. Walk according to what God says. Do not contend against it. Walk according to what God says. Don't ask the Lord anything. Just do it. And you shall see a wonderful result. There's no way the Lord will lead you into captivity. Even if he does, it's for you to receive glory and royalty. Are you listening to me? Or are you lost? Those online, are you lost? Amen. This is the word of the Lord. And it's beautiful. Amen. What a blessing. Sorry about that. Please return. Glory. Alright. Let's continue our scripture reading. It says, Of course, we may eat fruits from the trees in the garden the woman answered or the woman replied and it's only the fruit from the tree in the middle of the garden that we are not allowed to eat god said you must not eat it or even touch it if you do you will die so that was exactly what adam told him that look this is what the lord god had said most of you if you're in a relationship with somebody whether boyfriend, girlfriend, friend, whatever. You're in a relationship with somebody and the Lord God speaks to them and they come and tell you what the Lord God has both in store for the person and you, even if it's not about you, you should obey and go along it. Even if the Lord God has not spoken to you, do as much as is from the Lord God. You should obey. Don't contend against it. Don't do anything. Don't contend against it. Now, concerning this man, I, do, I don't want to spend much time on this because I spent um, quite some time on it on Chalak night. I spoke on this very, like, I spent some time talking about it for a very long time. So, let me just round up here. And... 
This is also another thing. What did the serpent say to her after she told them what Adam had told her? And the serpent said, you will not die. This was the spirit speaking through the serpent to be reminded. As for the serpent walking somewhere, he now got possessed and now went to do what the spirit had pushed him to do. Alright, sorry for that. This is the devil's plan to prohibit us from going on with what we have to do today. But it will not stand and it will not work. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Are you there? Let's continue. So this was the devil's response to Eve. He said, you will not die. So some, now the devil is, this is the devil's plan when he comes to prohibit something that he knows will elevate you to another level. This is how the devil will come to you and prohibit you from going to another level. Because the, the, the devil knows that this thing that the Lord has told you and that you are hurt, it will elevate you. It will elevate you. So if immediately it elevates you, you will know each and every strategy of his movements. So the Lord spoke to him. The Lord spoke to both of them. Now, because Adam shared, Adam shared with Eve. And so that now the Lord has spoken to her too. And so when the devil comes to that question, and you being foolish, you go and answer the question, did God really say? And they now say, don't do it. You haven't gotten there yet. You have not this, you have not that. I want to know. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So, you will not die, the serpent replied to the woman. So now they will shift your mind totally away and say heartbreaking things. If it's anyone, they will say heartbreaking things. You've not gotten there, you've not done this. Well, how much money do you have in your account before you are even doing this? Maybe you are going to start a business. The Lord has told you to start it. And you go and ask someone and they say, did God really say? Or are you sure you want to start it? Is it your plan? Have you forgotten that you have debts? It's wrong. Don't think like that. If God has said it, go ahead with it. Don't go and seek for, for confirmation from anyone. No one is God on this earth. We are only being used by God. Don't go and listen to anyone on this earth. If God has spoken to you, surely there will be people that will come your way. There will be people that will come your way. That, are, can, that will even try to bring you down. But let me tell you something. In all, give thanks to God. And in all, make sure that as you are giving thanks to God, praise His holy name. For He is great and His mercies endure forever. Because I did not be for him, you would not have heard what he wanted to tell you. So be thankful unto the Lord whenever you can. Don't delight the Lord of his glory. Don't deny him of his unending blessings. Don't deny him of any of that. Because he has done enough in your life for him to deserve such. Are you there with me? So, please. This month, I will, let's focus on one thing to the other. Amen. How many will do that with me? Let's focus on one thing to the other. So this month, we are going according to the leading, the right and the upright ways of the Lord. So if the Lord speaks, immediately we must do it. That is how we are going this year. So if it means we are going to be having 30 days prayer and fasting, right then, right now, we will start it. If it will take thousand years to create flyer, we will start it after the flyer is and we will share it. 
This is how we are going this month. Now, I want, let me just quickly talk on what this month is going to be about before any other thing. Yeah, let's, let me quickly talk about what this month is going to be about. Kindly help me with the month graphic and I believe we can be able to flow. Alright. So, welcome to the month of January 2023 and this is your year of extravagant change. Amen. Let's go, uh, actually, this year, there are going to be so many changes in your life. It can be either good or bad, but focus on the good ones so that you will have something to thank the Lord about at the end of the year. Amen. Because you started again and it's a blessing. Amen. So are you ready? This month, January 2023, is our month of strategic management. This January is our month of strategic management. Is our month of strategic management. How many are excited for such a beautiful month as this so what does this mean what is strategy strategy is a plan or a mode of thinking so this month is going to be all about strategy how we are strategizing to live through this month because i'm sure most of you have spent a lot in december <laughs> so this is the month where we are going to strategize how we are going to do things how to, how to prioritize certain things now Things that we must cut loose from our lives in this month and in the years around you. I hope so and I pray so for you. So, welcome to your month of strategic management. Along the days of between, amen. Uh, actually, about. Amen. So, this is our year of extravagant change. Extravagant change. Oh, my mouth wants to say, "Who comes to you with such, especially?" Like, so, uh, bless all of us. 